It's Monday, and let me tell you what, we got the case of the Mondays going on real hard right now. Yes, sun Saturday. Saturday, which I didn't put in the last video. Uh, this is the waterway here that we're going to be bringing a run up. And my dad grubbed out some trees, so uh, I don't know. Uh, a year or so ago when he grubbed on them he was grubbing on them with the Komatsu dozer so it left a pretty good uh, and not clean like if I do it with the tree puller I can shake all all of or pretty much all of the dirt off of the roots and it doesn't leave big dents he ended up pushing it all down there into this ditch to try and slow down the erosion that's coming down the hill here. If you can see that big pile of trees and stuff, Andrew and I cleaned it out. I was grabbing it out with the excavator. Andrew was scaring it away with the skid steer and the grapple, which is hanging up up there. But because he pulled those out or plucked them out with the dozer, I was trying to make a little bit of a, a smoother run, knock down any of the big hills. Like you can see, like here was probably one of them. It's just a hole, 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 hole. But it was a little smoother, get a little nicer survey. Well, I was pushing with the skid steer and the skid steer quit. Just killed itself. Came up with error code uh, 9400, E9400, which just means other errors, contact your local dealer. So I do kind of what I normally do. I came back, checked the engine oil. This thing uses absolutely no engine oil. Engine oil is perfect. Apparently it has a low radiator coolant shut off. Uh, does that look low? I don't think so. And it's never sprung any hydraulic leak. So one thing that I don't check that much, which I really don't like where the check is on this for the hydraulic oil, but it's right down there. And the hydraulic oil was a little bit low. And Andrew, I think they said they put two gallons in there this morning. But the other thing I come to check is the engine fuses. I pulled these two, no problem pulling those. You know, you can just wiggle it out, pull it, we checked it with the voltmeter, perfectly fine. I get to this one, it's really hard to pull. I cannot get the thing pulled out. Well, I get a pair of vice grips on it, I pull it, it breaks. I go to this one, which is the engine main fuse, I grab a bit where the vice grips, I pull it, it breaks. So we start thinking, oh, our fuses got hot, right? Well, we go. my dad to goes to try and get fuses today. They didn't have these fuses. So we got the fuses ordered and we went to look at it a little bit closer tried to pull these tabs out and we're like man those are hot or something's wrong with those so we're like well maybe they got hot and now we need to get a new little fuse box right here like this that's part of the main engine harness you apparently as of right now you can't get that main fuse panel and the engine harness for this Kubota is $2,200 $2,250 or something like that probably double that again or probably add another two to three thousand dollars to get it rewired um so five grand and we don't really know if that's even the issue or whatever so i start i was like not not happy about it at all if you can't buy this fuse box i would never buy anything orange again i would never buy another kubota anything that would turn me off and i love kubota equipment i really like kubota equipment i think in terms of i think it's great but if you have to buy a 2200 hundred dollar fuse harness to buy that and then have to rewire your your entire tractor to just get a fuse box not happening anyways i start to tear it apart and uh there you go there's little 10 millimeter bolts right here that hold in these tabs these fuses are not the same as these these tabs right there come all the way down so there's one of the tabs it's bolted in there so got the fuses coming got hydraulic oil in it hopefully the dang thing starts back up the way it's supposed to yeah, pause. I gotta interject here. Turns out the skid steer's fixed. I was probably pretty worked up about the whole deal. I was worked up about the whole deal. 
Uh, one of the side effects of working so many days consecutively and hours consecutively and um, not an exaggeration I can't remember the last day that I didn't work um, like I even worked Thanksgiving you know so it's it, like you forget things every now and then I had forgotten that I was pulling trees and I blew a hose on the tree puller um, so that's where the hydraulic oil went but I felt like I needed to jump in here and interject when I go to edit this video that uh, this issue is my fault. So um, I blew a hydraulic hose, forgot about blowing the hydraulic hose, and I didn't get the oil checked, and we ran it without it. But I'm going to leave this rant in here about the fuse thing, uh, because that still holds true. Um, and then also the other thing that holds true is that, I guess I haven't said it yet, is that a code will show up on your monitor here right down here where the engine hours are which was, has 2186 on it or something again Kubota if this machine's smart enough to shut itself down because of low hydraulic oil should be smart enough to sh throw a code that says low hydraulic oil hydraulic oil is honestly not something that you check every single day All right bub All right huh you and Squirt chasing pheasants already this morning. Anyways, after that little bit of rant, I've gotten quite a few questions about what we're doing here, tiling and things like that. I will be answering those throughout the day, throughout the video, uh, to the best of my ability. And if I don't get them answered and you still have a question, leave me another comment in the comment section. Uh, kind of interactive videos here because it's a lot of the same thing. You dig a hole, you drop a plow, you string some tile, and you bury it. That's kind of the same process over and over and over. There's a lot of questions about the way we do things, why we're doing things the way we're doing things, and I will try and answer those. But hey, if you would, take a quick second for me. Bandit would sure appreciate it if you guys hit that thumbs up button. We are getting darn close to 50,000 subscribers, and uh, maybe we'll have to do like a 50,000 video or something. I don't, I don't know what we'd have to do figure that out but I gotta go grab Andrew and oh he smokes a little rough man saying I just bark drink coffee <laughs> okay a couple YouTube questions that I can answer real quick uh, some people wonder what the grade is on these runs uh, pretty drastic these are I think this one was like a 10% grade uh, this is not to drain surface water, uh, not to drain surface water, not to drain subsurface water. This is uh, to put catch basins on to slow the erosion coming down the hill. Another one of the questions was, where does the water exit? So we're just dumping it, and then Mother Nature is taking it the rest of the way. We're just controlling it to this point. That is what we do with the majority of the water. We take it to daylight. We have enough slope, draws, ditches, things like that in our area that we don't have uh, i guess you could say issues with like a flat 80 that's just an unfortunate issue that we don't have that issue right I wish we had a little more problem. yeah where we have to put like a, a well or a bubble up make the water make it to daylight um i think maybe some people use those also to like slow down the water but we're dumping into mother nature's drainage ditch and then something else that we're doing so since we have big uh since we have pretty drastic slopes, we're using knife slit. Here is supposed to uh, not allow like the bed of the pipe to erode with fast moving water. So we're using some knife slit in the uh, high percentage slopes.
So another question I get asked, um, how do you design this stuff? Well, for this here, this isn't really designed on software. This is uh, pretty straightforward. I'm taking runs up the hill. Uh, if you want to design like a pattern tile system and stuff like that, you can go out, survey, use uh, software, plan it all out. It'll make sure all your flows are working. That's uh, how you can design it. Another question is, is how big of pipe can you install? That depends upon what boot you have on. I have a four inch boot, a six inch boot, and an eight inch boot. So the four inch boot does three and four inch pipe. The six inch boot does, which is this one right here, does six and five inch pipe. And the eight inch boot does eight. I do believe Soil Max sells a 10 inch boot. And the next time we change out the boot, I'll show that process. And then these here are a double wall. We put these guys here at the end of the tile runs, usually because it's exposed. They're a lot more rigid than the actual pipe. And usually at the end, you get shallow and that gives you a whole lot more strength so it doesn't get crushed at the end. You get a crushed pipe at the end, you ain't flowing no water. So some of you might be thinking, why the heck are you doing all this, you know? Why do you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on things like tractors and tile plows and skid steers and have the headaches and all that good stuff? And then deal with being cold, wet, muddy, and all the other things that a farmer probably doesn't want to be at the end of a uh, long season. And honestly, the answer to that's pretty simple. God willing, I will farm this dirt for the rest of my life and then whatever the future generations decide to do they might farm this dirt for the rest of their life and this two weeks of suck and it's really not suck because i kind of I, I enjoy this work uh but would i call it fun yeah i probably would i pretty much enjoy everything that i do other than mechanic and working on that dozer is no fun but it pays so you do it but given this couple weeks of work a few thousand dollars worth of pipe this farm will be a better farm it'll grow a better crop it'll grow a crop with less risk as in if you can control the water and get the drainage off um, you're gonna have less of a chance of uh, crop drowning out not being able to get into the field timely things like that so this becomes a lower risk farm, which means all in all, this farm is going to treat you better. And therefore, for me, it's pretty much a no brainer to get into a hole with a shovel for a couple of weeks for a lifetime of return. There you go. Surveying.
Okay, so last question we'll answer on this video. There's probably still way more questions I need to answer in the next video, but for time's sake, let's uh, let's answer one last one. And this one's kind of a, a more technical deal uh, that people are asking me about, so we'll explain it. And it's kind of my opinion on stuff, which might go against some other people's opinions, and that's what makes the world great. Okay, so the orange risers are hiccup bottoms. What that's going to do is that there will be a terrace, which is just going to be a mound of dirt, essentially like this, where you can tell, uh, maybe not on the camera here, but the ground kind of goes uphill here, and so this will get extended to kind of where it touches the even plane with the top end of that hill. Yeah, hopefully that made somewhat sense. And then obviously it'll go that way too, and each of them will create a slope coming down to the inlet from each side what that will do is that all this water which is really not that much water coming this way on this so this doesn't have to be a very big terrace uh, with our topography uh, sometimes you can drain quite a few acres but a lot of the times you aren't draining that much acre you're really eight acre acres you're really just slowing down the water and transporting it down so we'll, we'll get to that point so now that you'll have an imaginary terrace here which is this wall of dirt that you seed down with grass so it'll have grass on top of it and the slope comes to here all the water which is rainwater will come down to this at that point sidebar sidebar um, when you tie these two together essentially where the pattern is going to go here that pattern will help out these terraces because the fact that you use your flats or which will be a large surface area as the sponge so again you're taking the extra moisture out so when the rains do come the rains can infiltrate the dirt versus it all being saturated so you get a week where you get a rain every single day and it's cloudy you're not drying off at all you're you still be pulling moisture out so you're going to have water going down instead of trying to run across the top the water moving across the tops was causing the erosion so sidebarring when you pattern it it's going to help these out and have less runoff but the water that does make it to these terraces they will go down the pipe into the main which we can call this a main it's really just a tile run and then exit down there at the pond that will slow down if, if you want to say it'll slow down the water uh, but it will give the water a non-destructive path to a place where it's not moving dirt and nutrients and all the goody that we want left up here in the field now a few of you keen eye people are noticing that we are actually just putting the risers directly on top of the pipe what people are asking about is why are we not offsetting or spurring out our inlets these are not government jobs these are farmer jobs where uh our opinion is is that or my opinion is is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way the government designs their terraces um they design them really well like they're big they're, they're over engineered essentially uh and they design them where they should work pretty much without any problems the issue with that is that a government terrace is a lot more expensive to build and a lot more time consuming to build what they'd want you to build here is a farmable back deal cuts and then you got to come back and survey it do a whole lot of stuff probably takes us a quarter of the time to build one of these uh than it does to build a government terrace what that means is is that we can build four farmer designed terraces in the time that it takes us to build one government terrace so what's better for farmer design terraces that do work i mean they do work we have hundreds of inlets that we take care of and if there's ever an issue with them we show up and fix it so then the question is is why does the government want you to spur it off versus not so what can happen here except for like this is the top inlet so they'd be really wanting me to spur off this bottom inlet because the top inlet's not really an issue uh, basically because this inlet right here is higher up than that inlet down there if you had a bunch of water right here it causes a hydraulic pressure and they could see that as a relief valve and so water could push up out of that inlet down there um and kind of bubble up 
if you watched my pond overflowing video when the water starts running down the overflow tube there's a hole down there in the bottom and it uh, it it will shoot water up out of there if it starts running down the hill really fast for the most part here we have so if somebody wants to do the math on this uh, they can but I'm guessing we have probably this one's maybe like a 9% slope right here and this has a six inch pipe underneath it the amount of water that this can take away is fast so really have never had I have one that I have an issue with that happening on and that's over uh, at my farm actually where I installed one the pipes not big enough but I got like three or four fives coming into an eight and now got terraces on it so but it was there it, and it, it, if it does overflow it's really not that big of a deal because it overflows a crossing which it's designed to overflow and then it goes down into a pond so it does it doesn't hurt anything so when i get asked about why are we not spurring if this was a government job uh, say we we're doing it for somebody else uh, they would get spurred in because that's the way that they're designed by the government you got to do that uh, but for farmer wise i can dig down put an inlet in be done under 10 minutes along on my way that's why we do that and if there's ever you know an issue with any of these you, you fix it you just fix it in our opinion we're better off building more terraces per year to stop erosion than building fewer over designed terraces per year over design might not be the right word heavily designed terraces take a lot more time so do i think spurring off your inlets is a good idea yes do i think it's necessary on runs like this where it's got two runs draining a little bit of dirt a big pipe underneath it to bring the water away on a decent slope no i don't hopefully that answers that question without sounding You know, some people will get touchy about their drainage, you know, and do a good job, get the water to the flow where the water's supposed to be. And you can always fix if there's an issue later. I just, you're, that was one of the questions. Heck, let's have a little fun. Uh, Andrew wasn't working today, it was just dad and I. Dad is off on his way to go get the fuses for the Kubota. Uh, might try and put it back them together tonight if he shows up in time. What you guys saw me do is my dad calls it the blunt object. I put my uh, cutting edge or ditching edge onto the bucket. Dad calls it the blunt object because he thinks you can't dig as good. That's a true statement. You can't dig as good in hard dirt without teeth on there, but the teeth will grab the pipe and rip it when you got a blunt object like that on there uh i can drag across the pipe a lot less shovel work and if you actually touch the pipe your chances of as long as you don't get too aggressive come on bud you coming your chances of like snagging and causing yourself a bunch of work is diminished with the teeth you touch the pipe you just cost yourself at least half an hour's worth of work fixing that run, that run but anyways for fun what we'll do here to end out the video is i'll put you guys on time lapse and uh i will go solo put in an inlet see how long it takes me i'll see what time it is when i start and time when it is when i finish but if i don't do an outro or forget to do an outro which i probably won't thanks for hanging out with us we uh did some more dirt work keep those questions coming i'll keep answering them Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on the way out. And like always, we'll see you in the next one.
forgot my shovel. Short shovels for the win. All right, flowing water. Dang it, slip the track. Here you guys go. Uh, freshly installed, legitimately just got done uh, back filling 580 feet of six inch pipe running water like that already and how fast that is here's a drink jug how many ounces is this um 28 ounces show you how fast this fills up 